So we wanna, we're going to talk a little bit about CWE. We're going to have a, a few different topics along the way, and then we'll open it up for you to ask any questions you might have. So particularly if you're on your journey to CWE and you want to have this opportunity to talk to a CWE, then you can do so. So we're going to start off, first of all, I, I shared a bit of history of CWNP this morning. Did a lot of digging for some of that. Um, I was uh, around and familiar and close to and following what was going on quite a bit from 2005 forward, but before that time, I had to get some help. I had to dig up some old names and talk to some people and, and find out what was happening and force them to kind of relive memory lane a little bit. And uh, so one of those, of course, is here on the stage with us, uh, not only CWNE number one, but CWNP number one or two or one of those. I think I got renumbered <laughs> from one to like 32,714 or some weird something. I'm like, why? They said, because we don't want to look like a little small company. That was several years oh, ago. Oh, so you got a new ID <laughs> for your member ID. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so uh, what, what I wanted to, Devin to do, and I, I already mentioned this to him on the side, is uh, since you've been here from the beginning, there are people you know I didn't know. There, there are certainly back-end actions you know about I didn't know about. So maybe there's some people you want to mention that were there in the beginning that helped do a lot of the work and so forth. So go ahead and tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, sure. Thanks. So um, there were a lot, of, uh, a lot of folks working on CWMP early on, and uh, some are here today. Uh, the, the first uh, four employees of the company, the first two were Devin and Kevin. And believe it or not, our first three employees were named Scott. Um, so it was Devin, Kevin, Scott, Scott, Scott. It was, and so then we had to have a, a corporate policy that didn't allow um, you know, anybody except Scott's and something that rhymed with Kevin and Devin to be <laughs> employed there. Um, but um, the first, uh, after Kevin and Devin, uh, were uh, Scott Turner and Scott Williams. And then another is Rick Murphy. He was early days as well and uh, helped us with courseware constantly. Um, uh, Scott Turner was our, uh, our developer, website, databases, all of, all of the um, you know, certificates, graphics. If it, if it was uh, artistic, he did it. Um, he's not here today, but he was our programmer guy, and uh, every organization needs one of those. And uh, he did a lot of things. And then uh, Scott Williams worked in sales and management of sales and partner management and a and, uh, hundred other things. And uh, I think he lived on the phone. And, and so um, he's here today. Uh, Rick did courseware, teaching, and training instructors, um, reviewing materials, it, you name it. So, uh, so Scott and Rick are here today. And, and I want to say thank you. This program would not exist without them. It's impossible. They did a Herculean amount of work. And so uh, thank you, guys. If you want to stand up and, and take a round of applause, you deserve it. Um, absolutely. Thank you so much. Uh, we're all in your debt. Um, but, you know, over, uh, over the years, you know, the company grew to about 10 people before 2008 and 9 happened. Um, the whole world seemed to uh, shut down at that point. Training was very difficult. So we went from uh, the initial four, because Kev Kevin and, um, and me were uh, only there by ourselves for a very short time, and then Scott and Scott, and then very quickly after that, Rick came. And so the five of us were doing uh, most of the work for a long time. And then after that, we grew the company to 10 people, uh, we had project managers and uh, other sales folks and uh, moved, moved some pieces around within the company, different positions, uh, operations, and so on. But and then 2008 shows up, and it starts getting bad. And by 2009, we were back down to just four again. And so uh, we really hated uh, having to let people go. I mean, that was just a heartbreaking to us. So, uh, And then, um, you know, just to keep the company kind of running, uh, some of us had to leave, not because we wanted to, but because we wanted the company to survive. And... Um, so we saw, you know, I had to leave. In fact, we had a, we had a great business plan uh, for to keep the company afloat. You guys are going to love this. Um, the plan was uh, in 2009, if we all look for a job um, and whoever finds the job first, um, we leave and we let the others stay. And so everybody looked for a job, and I was the first one to find one, and so I left. And, and of course, that made it harder on the remaining three, and, uh, and, and Marcus took over. And then Scott, and Scott Turner left, and, and that, that made it even harder. So it got down to where I think it was just three people running the company at one point, Marcus and Kevin and Scott. And, so, and then Scott left, and, and I was like, the, the company's going to die. And, and, uh, and so it, it finally it started picking up. Got, you know, uh, Kevin sold it and got some new money coming in, and, and it survived barely. Uh, but, um, 
but the new management, Tom, Sean, have been able to grow this thing into what it is today with conferences, uh, you know, tens of thousands of people certified. So, so it lives. It's been here, and it is here, and it's going to be here. So thank you for that. Absolutely. And uh, we're, we're just so happy to carry on the legacy, for sure. Um, okay, so what everybody wants to know when they get a chance to talk to a CWE if they're on the journey themselves is what are the most important things you can tell me about getting ready to become a CWE and making sure my application's good? And what are your tips? What are your tricks? How do I do it best? How do I put a good foot forward? So we're going to go down the line and let each one uh, share kind of their feelings. And we'll start with the newest because it's probably very fresh for him um, <laughs> about what he had to do to prepare his application. And uh, by the way, if you didn't catch that earlier, your application was successful. Oh, wow. Good to know. Yeah, so, um, <laughs> so we're going to go down the line. Let each one of them kind of give you some tips on preparing for the CWE, how to get that certification. Um, and, and if you want to share while you're at it, what it's meant to you and that kind of thing, that's great. Oh. Uh, there we go. Thank you. Stress. I think that's that's the first thing. Um, <laughs> you, you think you think you know what you're doing, and then you start to write that application. You have an idea, and you're like, oh wait, that's gone. Um, but the biggest thing is find a mentor. Period. Find it any out there. Find somebody. I had a lot because I'm hard-headed and I need a lot of help. So I have four or five of you out there, and they know who they are. That I have banged questions till four in the morning. Just being like, this is not how it works. And I'm like, yes, it is. <laughs> so it's one of those things that if you have one opportunity, get a mentor. Find an any in here if you're on that journey and be like, hey, I have them all across the country because I call it weird hours. So that's, that's really all I got on that one. And as far as what it meant to me, uh, it's been a two-year-long journey. In fact, I was a Cisco guy. I'll just move closer over there. <laughs> and so I was, I got my CCNA wireless and I was looking to do and find training materials and there was nothing. And then I stumbled upon Keith and Rowell and the podcast and it just, it took off from there. So it's been nice developing friendships and then finally just going, okay, I've got to get this done. Um, so I think I might be one of the lucky ones. I know there's a few people in this room that um, did not actually go through the painful process of the application. Um, I, was, uh, I became a CWE prior to this whole application process. So I, I don't have that experience that Robert has. And, and, but I've, I've heard from a lot of you all, and, and I've seen some of the applications come in, and I've also um, you know, helped people with their applications. So I, I kind of understand that process. But um, because I was there since in the early days, I had to actually get kind of a, I don't know, personally approved by Devin, I think. <laughs> so, li yeah, liter literally, um, we had a, you know, a CWE process where we would um, participate in these roundtables. We would help uh, Devin at the time and then Marcus help write exam questions for all of the, all the cer cer certification exams. CWNA, SP, AP, DP, all of them as they came along. At their expense. Yeah, by the way. yeah. And um, by the way, Robert, so you don't need multiple mentors as long as you have one that answers any time of the day or night in any time zone. This guy right here, <laughs> literally, well, I mean, it's unbelievable. It's, I'll be in uh, Singapore and I'm like, oh, I gotta shoot Devin and I'll just, he'll answer this tomorrow. No, nope. about 30 seconds later, boom, there's a response. I'm like, isn't it like three in the morning? He's like, yeah, yeah, I'm up. So I agree with that. Find a mentor, you know, find someone that you can bounce these ideas off of. Find someone, obviously, a technical person that can, um, can be there and can challenge you. And that, that's what happened, I think, in those early CWE roundtables with um, some of the guys are here, Devin, um, Keith Parsons was there, Dave Coleman, um, I'll throw his name out because he's not here, Dave Westcott. You know, all of those guys. Chris Hyde. Yeah, most of you probably don't know Chris Hyde. He's kind of disappeared, but he I was. I know a, Chris Hyde. He's. <laughs> he was my technical editor. He's on my scary, books, so I know scary Chris smart. Hyde. So, the, so just to give you a quick, and, and Devin can relate to this. The, the early days, we'd all get together uh, as a group, and Chris Hyde would come with a suitcase. He dragged the suitcase in. It's like, Chris, what's that? That would be the 802.11 standard printed out. In binders. In binders, and and cross-referenced, and when there was a. The whole the standard. Whole now this is two thousand. This is two thousand one, two thousand two. Yeah, so it's well, all the way through two thousand six roundtables. Right. So it, he would bring in literally boxes and boxes of printed, and he would know exactly where to go. And exactly. Devin, Devin would say something, and Chris would go. He wouldn't. He just hold on, and he'd dig, and he'd come out, and he'd say, "In this 
clause and paragraph, it says this. And Devin would go, Dad, got it. <laughs> so then we had this whole discussion about what that really meant. So it, it's the same idea here. It says find those mentors, people that can and help you um, understand the technology that can challenge you. You know, when you think you know something and they challenge you and you have to defend it and explain your ideas, absolutely. Um, and the other piece of that is, is the always learning. I know many of the CWNEs here say, you know, the CWNE is just that license to learn. It's, it's the ability to, um, you know, you've reached a certain technology level for sure, a certain knowledge level, and you can teach other people what you know, but you also can learn a lot from other people. Um, I, I'm, I'm very ingrained right now in the Aruba world, uh, Aruba HPE. So um, there's a lot of things I don't, I don't know a lot about Cisco, right? Because I'm not doing that every day. Um, there's a lot I don't know about some of the under, other vendors. So um, in order to stay kind of current with all this technology and this, this industry is moving so fast, is you know, always learning. I have, throughout my career, that's been the one thing that I've always done is to always take every class, every course that someone offered me for free, or you know, if I could pay for it or whatever, let me get in there and let me learn more. Come to these conferences, um, you know, uh, the, the podcasts and the blogs, read all of that and try to stay up as much as you can and learn all of the new things that are coming out. Because you can, we can learn, everyone here can learn from each other. Yep, totally agree. Um, so that's all, that's good. <laughs> Cisco agrees. Yes. <laughs> um, I like the mentor thing as well. I love helping people. And uh, I remember Chris Hyde, who um, was not a practitioner, but he was a rocket scientist, brilliant guy. And he would call me sometimes at nine o'clock in the morning for no reason whatsoever. I think he didn't have a real job or something. He would just call me and, and say, uh, hey, I, I want to talk about calls 9.6 multi-rate support. What? I haven't even got any coffee yet. And, 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 and he wanted to tell me how I'm wrong and I hadn't asserted anything. And, and so we would argue over one little clause all day long. And I'm just like, what, is, what happened to my day? And Kevin's like, hey, did you write any questions today? I'm like, no, I'll argue with Chris again today. And, and so I like the mentor uh, aspect of this. Um, Chris was a big mentor to me. A guy named Joe Epstein from Maru early on was a good mentor to me. There was several, and um, I didn't do this alone. And uh, we had a good team you know, vetting the things um, uh, that I wrote. A couple of uh, things I would throw out there to answer the question, uh, besides the mentor issue, is uh, don't always take somebody else's word uh, for what's true. So I used to read an article by this person or a book by that person. I thought, well, they wrote an article, they wrote a book, it must be true. They must have done their homework, it must be true. Except this book and that book and this article and that article would conflict and that would leave me stuck. And so then I would write an exam question and just so sure that I was right, pine, pine trees and and he wasn't. But, but I wasn't, <laughs> yeah, but I wasn't. And so uh, I, didn't, I didn't need to be learning by having wrong questions, but I just didn't do enough homework. So um, dig deeper. Don't just take somebody's word for it. Go back to the standard, test what's in the real world, see how they conflict, see how different vendors do things uniquely. Uh, do your homework. Um, I think CWE should be a labor of love. Uh, it shouldn't be, I just want the cert, because people will respect me if I have the cert. Um, no cert is that way. I mean, I, I came up in the, the Novell world, whoever they are, and, uh, and then the Microsoft world, and then Cisco world, and, and, and eventually started CWMP. So uh, I understand how certs can make you more money and how certs can get you respect, and you're part of the boys club, the girls club, I get that. Um, but CWE should be part of, uh, a, a, or should be in part a labor of love. You want to learn it, not just get the cert, you want to know the information because then you get to be the mentor. If you don't know anything, you can't teach anything. You can't, if you don't have anything, you can't give anything. So do your homework. Don't just, just knock it out in 20 minutes and say, I want to be a, a CWNE, so you know, I, I met all this minimal criteria. Um, do your work. And then the last thing I would say is teach somebody. Even if you're the student, even if uh, you have a mentor, turn around and teach somebody else. This is the fastest way to see where your shortcomings are, to see where your knowledge holes are. Try teaching. Um, you know, at least two or three of us up here, I know, I don't know if you teach, Robert, but um, teachers find out very quickly in front of students where their holes are because students just ask questions they want to know, right? They just want to know something. And then you're like, oh, no, no, I just, I, I hadn't researched that. I hadn't thought of that aspect. And so when somebody asks you a question like that, go do your homework and then try to teach it to somebody. 
Um, I like that aspect of teaching because it makes me do more homework. It makes me, I used to challenge my students, still do a lot, um, challenge my students. I would bring a gift to class and say the first person who can shoot me down gets the gift. Uh, the first person who can stump me gets it. And not, not to show off, it was simply for me to learn. I needed them to push me. And so um, uh, try teaching somebody else, even if it's just a beginner. Mentor somebody else. Uh, pay it forward. If, if um, you know, somebody's helping you, be that person to somebody else. You know, how many, I can't even count how many people have come up to me and said, how can I repay you for what you've done for my career, for my life? And I go, go find somebody that was in your shoes and you do it for them. And that, that's good enough for me. And so uh, be the teacher too. Even if you're not a teacher by trade, teach somebody, even if it's one-on-one. -on -one. And enjoy it. Yes. Have fun. Stressful, but have fun. That's the biggest thing. Yeah. Yes. It's a labor of love. That's good. And on that note of um, teaching, you know, it's interesting. A few years ago, the publication requirement element was added to the application. And part of that concept is, as to what Devin was saying, if you understand something, you can explain it. You might not be a good talker. Maybe you can't do it orally. Uh, you might not be a good writer. Maybe you can't do it in writing. But in one method of communication or another, you'll be able to explain it if you understand it. If you can't explain it, it indicates that you don't understand it. And so the, the real driving force behind the publication requirement is to see someone explain Wi-Fi, whether that's internal documentation where they are providing documentation for the employees in the company, or if it's a YouTube channel they start, or if it's a blog that they begin, or anything like that. Uh, that publication requirement, or a book chapter for that matter, white papers, all of these things, that publication requir requirement is there to show that you can explain Wi-Fi. And um, that's why your publication requirement, for example, shouldn't be a blog where you copied and pasted a whole bunch of news from all over the internet into your blog and uh, feel like now you have content. Um, that's not your published content, that's your republished content. And that's not the same thing. So uh, the goal of that is to see you know Wi-Fi and the proof, you can explain it. Because if you can explain it, you know it, and if you can't, you probably don't. And we really want to make sure that people who become a CWNE are experts in Wi-Fi. No paper CWNEs. No paper CWNEs, exactly. And um, <laughs> uh, even though I, I think you got paper, didn't you? Oh. <laughs> Dang, that's cold. Because everyone else is a PDF CWNE. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, the next thing I'd like for us to talk about was something that I, I wanted to talk about a little bit in my keynote th this morning, but there were some technical difficulties going on, and I, I was never sure of exactly the timing I had, so I, I didn't want to bring the topic up then. But it, it's something that is very important. Uh, it's something that has gotten a lot of attention in our culture in recent years, uh, the concept of women's empowerment. We, we hear a lot about it. And um, we see more women getting into Wi-Fi, um, but I want to see more. And I, I, we have a woman up here who's Did a, I tell my girlfriend? Did you say a one? <laughs> the, the, the. The, we, we have the woman up here, uh, one of the earliest CWNEs, and uh, uh, I'm sure that you've seen a lot of women trying to break into this industry and trying to be successful in this industry. Um, so what do you think, what, what can we do to encourage women to get more involved in Wi-Fi and the tech space because they bring so much value? So a lot of people have asked me this, right? And um, at, at Aruba Networks, we've got, we've got all these, you know, women in technology conferences and these meetings we go to. And we have a lot of our, you know, our e-staff and everything that are women that are in technology that talk a lot about this. Um, I, I don't like to focus on those differences. I want to see a lot more people in technology. But certainly there's ways that we can encourage women um, I think to um, continue in the technology path. And part of that too is that, um, that all the men out there are encouraging them as well. So I just wanted to give a real, real quick story about Devin. So when I uh, passed my first CWNA exam, um, I got an email from, from this character a couple days later, right? And he's like, you just passed CWNA, our cert you know, company certification. We haven't held the first class and you pass this exam, who are you? And then I'm pretty sure at the end it said, and you're a girl. <laughs> there were no females in this industry this, this at 2001, all. 2001? 2001, yeah. Yeah, 2001. And uh, way to go. 
hair, okay. So, so I think, you know, what I'm trying to say about that is, is let's not make that a difference. Let's not make that something surprising. You know, let's not, um, I mean, I obviously, Devin did that at the time because it was, it was surprising to him, but let's not call it out as a specific difference. Let's just say congratulations for, you know, achieving that CWNE. I don't really like to point those differences out. And, and Devin and I have had a lot of discussions about this. I, I get uncomfortable when it's called out, oh, well, you're a woman in technology. No, I wanna be, I wanna be right here with all of these guys. And that's one of the things I think that, C, that the whole of, all of CWNP and a lot of folks in this room have done is they've treated me just like one of them. And Devin has done that. <clears throat> Some of my other mentors, um, like I said, Keith Parsons, Dave Coleman, Dave Westcott, I'll even say his name, Ben Miller. Heaven forbid. But uh, you know, all these guys, it, they, they encourage me. I, I'm right there along with them. Um, you know, it, it's never been, um, I, I'm, right, I'm just part of, the, part of the boys club. And to me, I think that that's how all of you need to treat the women that are coming up into technology, right? Is that we just wanna be part of that same group. We just wanna be part of that same club. And we wanna be respected for our you know, um, ideas, and the, the thoughts that we have and you know, the teaching that we can do and be treated just like, um, you know, like all the other guys that you have in the industry. Yes. 100% agree with that. <laughs> I got nothing to add to that. That's perfect. <laughs> all right, excellent. Now, we've got a, a few minutes left that I wanted to leave for you to be able to ask us any questions that you might have. So if we have uh, someone that can either take this microphone that maybe you can get working or find another microphone to carry around if someone has questions. Thank you, Charlotte. So uh, let her get the microphone to you. And uh, if you have any questions for the panel, then that would be great for you to do so. A uh, reminder while uh, we're waiting, on, well, there's one question in the back, Charlotte. A reminder while she's going there, uh, remember I mentioned this morning CWSP and CWIP JTAs are coming up and we will be looking for uh, people, subject matter experts to participate in those JTAs. And so if you are interested, make sure you email me, Tom at CWNP.com. That's Tom at CWNP.com. <laughs> You sound and like an announcer, man. <laughs> but, you know, it, it's funny. Every week, every week on the news desk, I'm always leading up to the conference. I'm saying, well, the conference is now 37 days away. If you haven't registered yet, go to conferences.cwnp.com. That's conferences.cwnp.com. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, remember, if, if you're interested, email me. Uh, Tom at CWP.com, and I will uh, get you more information, tell you what's involved, how hard the work actually is. We work uh, fairly long days uh, for two and a half days at least for each certification um, to get through the process. So it, it, is, it is hard work. And uh, if you want to be involved, then just email me and let me know. I'll gather the list. We'll get together, and we'll get a, a great team of subject matter experts. You do not have to hold any of our certifications to be involved as a subject matter expert. This is not about making CWSP what CWSP was. Every certification release is about making an exam what it should be. And so what I need you to be is an expert in that area. So if you are an expert in wireless security, email me. Uh, I'll talk to you. We'll find out about your credentials and so forth, and we'll build great teams. So uh, we had a question back here in the back, right? Testing. Good. Fixed it. Um, hi, my name's Ian Turl, I'm from the UK. Um, I've decided to take the leap of faith and go for the CWNE. Um, yeah. <laughs> On the education point, you were saying about writing white papers and all this, and I, I'm not very good at that type of thing. To be Can you talk myself. more slowly? If up here, that British accent is coming through as blah, blah, blah. <laughs> okay, so let's... Let's start again, shall we, more slowly. Perfect. Is that okay? Devon, is that okay for you? We're doing retries. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. You'll have to translate British into Georgian. <laughs> so, okay. So the point was, I'm going to go and do my CWNE. I'm going to put the effort in, put the work in. On the education point, I really don't like writing white papers and... I'm just not, I don't feel confident enough about that. You were saying that there's going to be different mediums for education. So can we do videos? Can we do, what, what else can we do? So I'm going to be standing on that stage tomorrow. 
doing a presentation and hopefully educating people. Does that count towards that, or what, what, what can we use? That's a, that's a great question. One of the most common we get about the CWD application is what qualifies as a publication requirement. Um, I will tell you that videos definitely qualify, but they are also the, the most painful for the board because um, it takes a lot longer. You got to have the block of time to watch the video. Uh, some people, I mean, they're so committed. They're like, they live in like the middle of nowhere and they have satellite backhaul Wi-Fi and uh, don't even have true high-speed internet. And I'm not going to mention any names, but, you know, so Mo and... Um, <laughs> But, uh, but, but no, so she, you know, she, when she's reviewing an application, uh, one of the things, whether she can review it right at that moment or not, is am I at a place where I've got good internet so that I can uh, download some huge file that might be there? So it is more challenging, but we will still accept it because we want people to be able to do uh, what works for them. Uh, it's probably best if you can provide it on a streaming service instead of putting it on, you know, some kind of a drop uh, box or something like that where they're required to actually download the whole file. So, um, you know, and if you're concerned, well, I don't really want it to be public, it was a video I did for my company, then, you know, put it on Vimeo and make it private. Um, and then just share with us the link. Uh, something like this here, obviously it's going to be eventually online. And so that would be something you could refer to in your application. So videos work, uh, e-learning for your company um, works, things like that, uh, and of course blogs magazine articles, white papers, um, anything of that sort, YouTube channels. Uh, oh, because that was his. Okay, that's why. So, um, so anything where you are teaching someone, and it doesn't even have to be the whole world. So you might be teaching your internal employees in your company because you're providing documentation for your engineers in your company about how your wireless network works and how they configure the access points during installation or configuration or whatever it might be internally. But it can't be canned documentation. What I mean by that, it can't be, well, you know, I went into Ekahow and I dumped a report and that's my publication requirement. I gave a report to a company out of Ekahow. Um, you didn't write that. Somebody back with UC did. Um, <laughs> you knew how to use Ekahow, but you didn't write that report. And so it needs to come from you so we can validate that you actually do understand the concepts, really, is what it's about. Can I, can I throw something? I have a question. Yep. So this is something I wish I would have done when it comes to the publication, and it was either said by Keith or Blake. Take your notes and make a blog out of them. And there's your publications. You start at the beginning on CWNA and you take your notes, you write them up because you're already writing your notes, post them in a blog, and now you have your publications by the time you do your app. So one thing I would add to that, whether it be video or writing or what have you, is a note about the content. Um, you know, I have a lot of folks coming up to me asking me, especially about CWNA applications, what content? Um, and uh, my answer is always, I think, unexpected. Um, uh, a lot of folks just want to get past that requirement thinking if I can just create something that doesn't sound stupid and, and to get it accepted, then, I, then I've, you know, I made the grade. Um, I'm not on the CWE review panel, but if I saw that, I would reject it. And the reason is because I would want you as an applicant to uh, give me your very best work. And I'll give you an example uh, what of what I mean by that. Uh, a friend of mine was applying for a job as a systems engineer at a, at a vendor, and he interviewed the first time, and it went pretty well. They narrowed the field down a bit, and he had a second interview, and in the second interview, he had to do a presentation. And they said, look, we just want to see your presentation skills so you can present about your cat, your motorcycle, or, you know, hobbies, or whatever you want. He said, what do you think I should pick? And I said, I think you should pick multi-user MIMO. And he said, I, I don't know how multi-user MIMO works. I said, that's the point. Neither do the people interviewing you. And, and so uh, <laughs> I said, but the people interviewing you are out there selling their equipment based on that feature. And I said, they're saying multi-user MIMO is a switch. And he says, is it? I said, that's for you to find out. And, and so he studied and he studied and he came back and he said, I put together a presentation. I want to see if you can uh, look at this for me. And, and it was awful. It was wrong. And, and he presented it to me and I said, this is terrible. And so he went back home and he worked on it. And a week later, he dressed up in a suit and he came over and he says, uh, I want to do this again. And it was terrible. It was better than last time, but it was terrible. 
And so he came over a third terrible time. Terrible in his suit. He, hmm? Terrible in his suit. Yeah, it was terrible in his suit. And he wore boots with his suit. I don't know. And, and so it's Georgia. It's Georgia. <laughs> and he's, he's, so he comes over a third time. And it was much better, but his presentation, was, it was awful. And, and I said, um, oh. And so I was correcting him. And, and finally, we got into this back and forth about multi-user MIMO. I mean, all the things you really want to talk about, that's probably not one of them. But we get into this back and forth, and he's looking at a packet capture, and I poked him about a few things, and he argues back. And he's like, no, this, that's, that's not how that works. I was like, uh-oh, he's getting there. And, and pretty soon, he's starting to get indignant about this. No, the overhead here, you can look at the frames, and you can see this, and he's starting to just get out of whack. I said, now you have a presentation. Now you know something. If you can argue me to the ground, if you can get indignant about some feature and you can preach it instead of just trying to teach it or talk about it, you probably know it. And he did. So he went and did that presentation uh, for the vendor. And uh, when he finished the interview, I knew about it because the vendor called me and said, will you believe this guy did a presentation on multi-user MIMO in front of a bunch of Wi-Fi, experienced Wi-Fi engineers? Is he insane? We offered him the job already. And, and so he got it immediately. And so it, that story is to tell you, if you're going to submit an application, uh, whether it's a video or it's a blog or it's a white paper or any kind of content, find a problem that nobody else has answered. Just find something that gets under your skin. Find something that's cool or whatever, but nobody else has even talked about it. It's just this, this elephant in the room and go after it. And yes, you don't know how it works. Find out and present that. And, and that will not only get you past this board, because everybody's going to be looking at that going, wow, this person dug deep, but it's also going to make you feel better about yourself. It's going to uh, give you a chance to see what you, you can do. I think that's really important concept. Yeah, I want to I want to add to that. So I absolutely agree with what Devin's saying. And this is what we mean by the CWNE and, and having to go through this whole process is that all of us, even you know Devin and I from the early days, we continue to do this. So I'm going to bring up Devin's favorite topic, ghost frames. I lost about three hours of my life a couple months ago in a conference room with uh, Devin, Ben Miller, Peter McKenzie, and GT Hill. And these guys, they, there was this argument about these ghost frames. I'm sure everybody's seen it on Twitter. Ben has this idea. He gave it a cool name, and he's passionate about it. Devin doesn't agree, but they got up on, they whiteboarded it out, and literally hours later of back and forth and back and forth, okay, well, what can we agree about? What can we not agree about? And they worked this all out, and we had some reps, myself, GT, and Peter, who kind of said, you know, let's keep this, you know, uh, they, they were kind of, arguing to us, right, trying to convince us of their, of their thoughts and ideas. And that, to me, that illustrates the, the passion and, you know, the spirit of the CWNE that we would all just spend a couple hours of our life because we wanted to dig deeper and find out more about it. And, and I think at the end we didn't all agree, but there were some things that came out of that that there was some agreement on. So that's a, that's a great example. Don't, no, they're just poltergeists. There. There's a bunch of blogs about it. <laughs> Six minutes left. We can't answer that. <laughs> so, uh, and by the way, this afternoon, we're going to illustrate that live right here on stage when okay. Jason Hintersteiner and Dave Devin Aiken uh, give us two takes on 802.11ax. So you'll get to see kind of what happens behind those closed doors right in front of you. And so that's going to be a lot of fun this afternoon. Um, any other questions? We can t probably have time for at least one or two more. Any other questions in the room? Looking around. Do you have one in the back, back here? Excellent. And by the way, while she's on her way to our questioner, let me point out, you know, we're talking about content and blogs. Um, how many of you have ever used Mr. CCIEW's blog? Okay, you see these hands around the room. Uh, his blog is fact, right? It's just, here's a fact, here's a fact, here's a fact, here's a fact. And so many people use it for a reference. So it's a perfect example of you don't have to be Robert Frost to create a blog that adds value to the community. Um, Xavier Tofield, um, I have a question around uh, CWNP community. Is there an access or resources to connect uh, CWNP people um, across the globe? Because I'm not sure of many in Austin, Texas. Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. That's going to be part of the new CWNE.com that's going to be launched. So on a volunteer basis, people will be able to say that 
their location will be provided out there um, rather than it being, you know, we're not going to impose it on anybody because that's a privacy issue, but a person can go into their own account and enable that locationing opportunity. So uh, that will be something that we have there. As far as CWNEs, we do have a, a map that Blake Crony created um, uh, trying to build out a, a little bit about who is where on that, and that is CWNE map.com, right? So it's cwnemap.com. And uh, so that's a project that's already underway. Um, and then again, when cwne.com launches that the whole community concept, it will be an option for people in their profile to enable locationing there so that you can connect more with people around the world. Definitely. Okay. Yeah, I, I would just Twitter, add yeah. to that. There's so, yeah, there's Twitter. And, and that's what this conference is really all about too, is to connect you with other CWNEs. And I know I get emails kind of out of the blue from people, like, hey, I saw you present somewhere, and you know, can you tell me more about this? Usually it's Aruba-specific stuff, obviously, or you know, can you tell me where to go for more information about that? I know Devin is very open to you know, people reaching out to him and, and helping um, other people. You just have to reach out and let us know, you know what it is you need from us, because I think the whole community of CWNEs are, are here to help you. Also, Sam runs the Slack, uh, the Wi-Fi Bro Slack, so get in there and just ask questions. <laughs> you, you should probably talk to Sam about that. I will. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so um, are there any other questions in the room? Any other questions? Oh, right over here, Charlotte, we've got a couple of questions. Right over here in the front two rows middle. Front two rows middle. Hi, my name is Prashant Shah, and I work for Upstream Networks. Uh, I've been in the wireless since 1997, and I've seen a lot of uh, different, you know, starting from uh, the DSS or even going back uh, frequency hopping products and all that. Um, I just, you know, I didn't take my time and start doing my C uh, uh, CWNP certification, but I did my CWN already. I'm working my way to CWAP. So um, I'm really excited about it. Um, oh, the question, uh, I know it's kind of, I'm a little bit jumping ahead, but um, to do the CWNE, like you mentioned, I know you already mentioned that I'm maybe a little bit repetitive, but um, can you also teach uh, some of your colleagues in the company, would that work also? And, and, uh, and if you can write a paper about it. So, so the question is about teaching in what context? In, in, your your in colleagues? To, uh, oh, yeah, about the wireless. Uh, in oh, within, like for within the publication company, requirement. Within your company, yeah, for CWNE. Um, as long as it's something that was published, and that's the key word. By published, you know, we're not talking about a publisher. We're saying it's out there. Um, either out there in your company or out there for the whole world, but it's, it's there. It's something that has been published and is available. So it can't be that you taught a class and you've got a slide deck from it and you're going to give us the slide deck. We need to see how you actually presented it. Yeah. Okay. And I think there was another one right behind it. Yeah, we've still got a minute left. I think there was another one right behind him there. Hi, my name is Jed Raby. Um, I wanted to ask about new CWNEs. Um, I am CWNE member 280, and my question is, how can new CWNEs become more involved in the community, um, whether it's with more teaching or um, how do you get involved? Okay, great question. Um, and there are going to be several ways you can do that. So we've got 40 seconds to answer that question. Who's going to do it? Nope. Twitter. <laughs> Next answer. Twitter. <laughs> um, no. uh, forums, if we can. <laughs> forums, yeah. yeah. Forums are also great. Uh, yeah. No, whoa. Uh, bulletin board. Um, I, uh, uh, move closer. I, uh, I don't really have anything. Uh, social media is a and, really and, and great And again, tool. watch for CWNE.com. There's going to be some opportunities yes. out there for that as well. And um, I know a lot of people don't don't like social media. There are people like 
Chuck that, that avoid uh, Twitter and things, but, uh, but I think it's a, it's a good tool for getting your questions answered and, and interacting. And we do have the lesser known CWNT status too, so don't forget if you want to teach actual official classes, uh, you can become a CWNT and then you can uh, have that opportunity with a learning partner near you or something like that too. Yeah, I, can I add real quick? Sure. So I would also add if it's vendor specific, I know that you know Aruba has, we have our own Airheads community, I'm sure Cisco has their own, you know, plenty of communities and forums and things that people can share ideas. So those are other resources as well if you're looking for very, you know, if you have technical questions about a specific vendor and how those things are done. Absolutely. Robert, Kimberly, Devin, thank you very much. Everyone give them a hand. Thank you very much. That wraps up our CWE discussion.